I'm at the Broadford Circuit in Northern Victoria to put four key models that help shape the past 25 years of HSV through their paces. Starting out with this one, the 1988 VL Group A SS Commodore. Very raw car and it was nicknamed the Batmobile for its distinctive look. Fast forward to 1996 now and the VS model HSV GDSR. This particular car was a race replica of what Craig Lowndes drove to Bathurst and the Touring Car Championship in 1996. 90% of them actually had a blue printed engine from the race team that stepped them up to 220 kilowatts. Something a little bit more modern now and a car that still remains the fastest HSV ever produced, the W427. A massive seven litre engine, 375 kilowatts, 20 inch wheel and tyre package and huge performance brakes. And finally, the car that celebrates HSV's 25th anniversary, the limited edition GDS. This particular car encapsulates everything that HSV stands for, performance, design and technology. But the best part about today, it is time to go and drive them. I'm on board the new 25th anniversary limited edition GDS and the drivability of the newer models is so much nicer. You can feed the throttle on. The VL, for example, has got twin throttle body, so it's actually uh, quite a jerky or harsh initial throttle application. This is just so smooth and the torque curve is so much more progressive. It delivers its power from a lot, a lot lower in the rev range and that's generally where you spend most of your day-to-day -day travels. Some of the earlier models had a lot of induction noise, uh, particularly the ones that were prior to fuel injection, but the new one, particularly this GDS, that bimodal exhaust, the acoustics is just absolutely superb. Listen to that. So Cam, that looked like a little bit of fun. Tell us what it was like driving those four iconic HSVs all on one day. Uh, it was a great opportunity, GT. I think um, for me, I was pleasantly surprised by some of the old cars, particularly the VL, which looks like a muscle car, but it, it's, it's more refined than I'd actually expected. I'd never driven the VL Group A. You know, you're always told never drive your hero car. I mean, it sounds like the hero car for you is the GDSR. What was, what was that one like? Yeah, that was fantastic. Um, a little bit uh, under brake compared to the newer models, that's for sure. That was one thing I did notice. And, you know, only um, 215 kilowatts or, or 220 with the blueprint version. Blueprint version, version this one. That's right, 220. Um, but it felt faster, probably just because it was quite raw inside the car. It had a reasonably good balance, you know. I think the, the VL, though, you've got to remember back then, it only had a 16 inch tyre on it. I mean, that's what a, you know, a base Commodore comes out with these days. So for the weight of the car, it's definitely under tyred but it's still an exhilarating driving experience. So, so that was a full range cam, but you really didn't get to put your foot down, did you? Let's take a look at the vision and see what it was like when you uh, went for a fang in the 25th anniversary car. that stands out with this car is just refinement compared to 
the earlier models, the way it turns, the way it puts the power down. You've got 325 kilowatts, which is considerably more than the early models. And listen to that bimodal exhaust. I absolutely love that as part of the new HSV series. It sounds fantastic, but in this one, you've also got the six piston premium brakes fitted as standard now, and boy, does it stop. No point having all that grunt if you can't stop the car. This new limited edition car actually comes with a, a brand new forged alloy and it's actually the lightest wheel HSV have ever produced and you want the car or the unsprung weight to be as light as possible. It just contributes to that nice balance that you get and this car really does hang on. Overall, it's a car that you can drive quietly on the highway, be quite conservative with fuel consumption, but you come to a track like this, and man, can you actually have some fun. And uh, yeah, okay, I had a little bit so of fun you, here. Um, you found uh, where the uh, traction control button was? Do not do this at home, <laughs> by the way. Um, Getting a bit close a, to the line there, man. A trained professional. <laughs> yes, uh, a couple so, of takes on that one, I was by the say, way. did we get a trained professional to do that? That was the traction completely off, but um, in the current cars, and uh, in this 25th anniversary is no different, in competition mode, you go through a windy bit of road like this, and it's just so well poised, you know. The, I think you're talking about the design, poise and aggression of the car comes across when you're driving it. The fact that the wheel is lighter definitely gives you a better balance. The car's more responsive in the front end. So, yeah, it has three times more power than some of the very early versions. But the word refinement I keep coming back to because it's, uh, it's easy to drive and it's safe to drive but it still gives you that exhilarating feeling that you can go out, do a track day, use the EDI dash, and uh, have a bit of fun with the car. And Garth helped us with some test driving before the E3 was launched uh, at Winter. And Garth, you, you, you tried out the competition mode or everything switched off, and you actually found it quicker with competition mode, didn't you? Yeah, in full competition <coughs> mode, so that was the track setting, the car was faster than when we turned everything off and took all the aids out of the system we were actually quicker with, with the aids on, I guess, in competition mode. And that was exactly what it was designed for. It's designed for spirited driving, but uh, in a controlled manner. And, and um, you know, those systems, they're there for a reason to save you, but they also make the car faster and better for what it is.